Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's title of the video, as I'm sure you saw and you clicked on it for a reason, is you had a spiritual awakening and now you wanna work for yourself. If you clicked on this video, chances are that you have awakened. You have awakened to the unconscious programming that's been put on us since we were young by society telling you that you need to go to college, get married, have a kids, uh, own a house, get a job, work the same job for 40, 50 years, build a retirement fund, uh, you know, and then enjoy the last bit of your life. However, that's not you. You know that's not you and you never have been like that and that's why you clicked on this video. You're awakened and you've had this spiritual awakening or you're currently going through it and you just can't tolerate the same things you used to. The same work, the environment, going inside and just being in a cubicle all day, some soul sucking work that you just slave away and just make a paycheck and that you can't seem to get ahead even though you did everything you were told to do. As a matter of fact, maybe you're even behind because you have a mortgage, you have kids and it's just draining your soul. And especially now that you've had an experience in your life, maybe it was something great that happened that woke you up, but most often it's something painful for us who are star seeds, light workers, healers that has awakened you to your greater purpose, knowing that you've always been here for something different rather than just slaving away in front of a computer doing spreadsheets or whatever the case may be, your particular situation. You probably know that you've always been different. You've been picked on, you've been abused, you've been neglected, you've been abandoned, you've been targeted, you've been taken advantage of, and you've also healed through a lot of that stuff and you're finally awakening to your power, who you are and what you want in life. However, the circumstances dictate otherwise at the moment. Again, you're probably stuck in a job that you hate. Maybe you're not uh, making any money or maybe you've made a lot of money, but you hate what you're doing and you feel that you're in the velvet trap of, again, a mortgage. You know, I have a family to support. So even though I've had this awakening and I'm miserable, uh, I have people that depend on me and responsibilities. Whatever the case may be for you, you know that you want to do something more with work because, again, you're different and you feel that you have a higher calling in your heart. This video is for you if any of that resonates with you. It's a long-winded introduction, but I really want to make sure that what I'm saying gets through to you because I'm currently going through the same thing or I've always felt this way that I need to work for myself. And it comes down to mastering your craft. Now, how does all that relate to you switching jobs and how this video is going to help you? Well, it starts with you realize, one, you have a greater purpose than what you're currently doing. And most importantly, you want to work for yourself because you can't tolerate work environments. You can't tolerate certain people, uh, toxic situations, a boss that's just a pain in the ass and is completely insensitive. Uh, you know, best case scenario, they're understand or, you know, they're caring and compassionate, but they don't understand. Worst case scenario, they're a tyrant and you're being bullied in the workplace. Uh, you're being picked on and targeted for no reason. You're getting passed up for promotions and you just can't take anymore. So how do you get out of this? What do we do? Well, uh, pardon me, as I'm getting my legs back when it comes to my own gifts, which is writing, which is speaking, which is teaching, I've made some notes here because I really want to make sure that I hit some important points with you uh, so that we can help you move forward with your goal of getting out of that crappy environment and really getting you aligned with what your purpose is, what your passion is, uh, and how you can make money and more money probably than you've ever made in your life doing just that. So... What I really wanna say um, is the first step you've gotta do is identify what your passion and your purpose is. And there's a couple key indicators that you can use that I wanna share with you that'll help you identify what your passions are, what your skills are, and what your purpose is. One of the key indicators is that time flies when you're doing it. Sure, you've had instances in your life where you've been doing something uh, not scrolling on social media, something productive, something that you enjoy. Maybe it's uh, every time you, you know, bake a cake or you're like in the kitchen and you're cooking or every time, you know, uh, you're stressed out from work, you hop on the piano and you learn that as a kid uh, and you wanted to become a musician, but your parents said you can't make money doing that. So you need to go and uh, study whatever law or, you know, become a physician assistant or yada, yada, right? You get the point. But you've always loved doing that and would love to do that every single day. 
So chances are, whatever that thing is for you, time flies when you're having fun, as they say. So time flies when you're doing this particular thing. Again, for me, it is. It's writing and speaking. I can sit here and write in my journal for like two hours and be like, oh my God, what time is it? You know, every time I speak, uh, it is coming from my heart, from my soul. I really enjoy doing this. So those are two indicators. Time flies. And one, you really, really enjoy it. It's something that you genuinely enjoy. It brings joy into your life. It's a natural flow. Another key indicator of identifying your passion, how you can start to work for yourself and build a business around this, is that you're probably naturally really good at it. You've always been good at this thing. You've always been good at uh, drawing. You know, when you took art classes when you were young, you didn't have any lessons. No one taught you how to do this stuff. And you look at your artwork and you look at the other kids' artwork, you know, maybe even your art teacher was like, you are, you've got something going on here and you just do it. Maybe you've always just doodled and had fun and, and wanted to do comics or something like that. Whatever the case may be, it's something you enjoy. It's something that you've always been good at and time flies. These are a couple key indicators on identifying what your skill set, your true calling, your purpose, and your passion is. All of these things, it's easy for you. And that's the number one thing, it's ease. It's easy for you to make these beautiful paintings. You're interested, you wanna explore different mediums. Um, you know, you, you're you a really good guitar player, but you've always liked violin and you like to sing as well. Music is an escape for a lot of us, right? But you've resonated deeply with it and you have something in your heart and your soul that says, this is what I have to offer the world. And you know, again, because it's coming from your heart, it's bringing you joy and time flies. These are key indicators, just gonna keep repeating them so you really can absorb these messages because I want you to get out of that shitty situation you're in because I know how crappy it is when you're in a job that you hate, when you're around people you don't wanna be around, no one's happy in that workplace doing what they're doing. You gotta get out. And so this is how we begin to identify and transition where you're at and how you can move out of this. So you identify what your gifts are and your gifts are your purpose. Your purpose is your passion. Your passion is easy. Time flies. All of these things, it comes naturally to you. These are a few indicators. Now, one limiting belief I want to go over that's probably been instilled with you, say it's art. Art is a common one. There's a lot of beautiful artists out there, so talented and so skilled that have art that truly moves people and changes them on such a deep, both maybe conscious and unconscious fundamental level. But they were always told you can't make money doing art, right? The starving artist, the start, you know, the struggling musician, these adages that society again puts on us and programs into our mind in order to suppress your gifts that you've always known you have and you've actually really wanted to do. So the limiting belief that you need to overcome is that, oh, I can't make money doing that. You absolutely can. And the way that we start by thinking about how can I make money doing that is first of all, belief. And the belief is by asking yourself a question. Are there other people out there that have made money doing this particular thing that I wanna do? 100%, 100%, there is thousands, if not millions of people out there that you've never heard of and may never know of, but you know that there's people out there making money and are wildly successful that are wealthier, living these free, happy lives, doing what they love, can work when they want. You know, um, it's an alignment with their purpose. They're having an impact on society and people. There are so many out there. So that's the limiting belief number one that you've got to overcome that you can do this and you can make money doing it. Uh, the other thing that I would say is if you are in that position where you drank the Kool-Aid uh, like so many of us had and you're like, oh man, I gotta go to school, I gotta get a job right out of college, I gotta just put away in my 401k or my IRA, I gotta get married and have kids because this is what society is doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe it's stuff that you've also wanted to do and don't get me wrong, of course, like all my... Uh, friends, you know, families. I mean, yeah, that's something that is important to you in your life that you've built and that's a part of your life. But it's like, okay, well, I do have these responsibilities. I can't recklessly just abandon my job and go and travel the world and uh, learn how to become, you know, this world class, you know, chef or something like that because I have these responsibilities. Okay. So the second limiting belief is that you can't do it because of your current circumstances. You absolutely can because one, there's people that are doing it. And two, you can do it. 
this is where the practicality comes in and the planning that you've got to go in this in a systematic way. First of all, what is my gift? Second of all, how would I make money doing my gifts, overcoming that belief? And the third is, okay, well, what would this look like? You start to piece these things together because even though this is something that's resonating with you now for maybe it's just happening, maybe you've been sitting on this for a month, six months, a year, five years, maybe it's been 15, 20 years of your life and you've always known this deep down. Whatever the case may be, it's going to take time in order to transition. So where do we start? Identify your gifts, overcome some of these limiting beliefs. The next thing that you do is just start doing that thing that connects you to the joy. So if it is art and you're a full-time mom or dad and you've always wanted to do art, but you have a, a wife or a husband, you have kids, you have family, you have priorities, you've got loved ones you take care of, whatever the case is for you. Well, can you set aside 20 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, just a short period of time and just get a sketchbook and a pen or a piece of paper and just start drawing and doodling just for fun. That's where you start. Just start small, go buy a little paint set, go take a little course online and say one day a week, uh, you know, when the kids are gone, summer's coming up and they're at summer camp, I'm gonna go buy uh, some cheap art supplies and go start painting just for fun. Take a little class online, watch a YouTube video. You absolutely can this is something you really want to do, don't worry about how it's going to look and how you're going to make money doing it yet. What I would suggest is just start doing it and see if this is really bringing you joy, if it's something you enjoy, if it's something that's pleasurable to you, that's not stressful. That is, again, a key indicator that this is what you want to do and this is actually your purpose and your calling and you can have a massive impact and make a lot of money doing it overcoming those limiting beliefs, identifying it, uh, what those things are, what your gift is, what your purpose, just start doing it little by little. As you begin to do this little by little, two things are gonna happen. You're either gonna start drawing and being like, eh, I'm kinda bored of this, eh, maybe this isn't for me, that's okay. It may be something else. Or, man, I really do enjoy this. Man, how could I make money doing this? What would this look like in my life? What would I have to do? As Stephen Covey says in the habits, seven ha uh, habits of highly successful people, you start with the end in mind. So once you do this, you work backwards. Okay, I do wanna be a full-time artist. Okay, what are my current circumstances? I can't just abandon everything, take all these art classes and spend my money over the next six months or a year, you know, going all in on art and just making art every day. If you can, that's amazing. Man, you've set yourself up well and you have an amazing opportunity in front of you to really fulfill the calling in your heart and your soul. If you can't, you do it gradually. Start small. And as you begin to go along this path and embark on this journey of transformation, of change, of working for yourself, answering your higher calling, doing something that's important to you, sharing your gifts, the universe will start to leave breadcrumbs. And you may see all the synchronicities where you're like, this is crazy, I was at Starbucks and I happened to talk to the guy behind me, he had friends to be an art teacher right after I got done seeing this video. And he said he has free art classes online as an introduction, oh my gosh. These are the synchronicities that will start to happen in your life and lead you down your path. So let's simplify all of this to wrap the video up. If this resonates with you, start small, just identify your passion. Uh, again, using art as an example, get a freaking sketchbook out, get a little crappy cheap paint art material and just dedicate 30 minutes a week, whatever you can do, 10 minutes a day, a small amount of time in order to start exploring this to see if that's your path. And just start with that. Does it bring you enjoyment? If it does, you're probably on the right path. If you get more excited about it, finding yourself wanting to go deeper and deeper into it, you're really on the path. If you start to see synchronicities, like I used the example of getting coffee uh, at Starbucks and meeting an art teacher and you just saw this video and you wanna become an artist and you always have, well then listen to the signs of the universe. Now you're awakened. So the synchronicities, the universe is gonna start putting people in your path. They're gonna start putting opportunities and say, if this is what you want, we're gonna show you the way. So start with that. And you've got to give this time and understand it's a long game. Whatever you're doing, it might take you a year, three years, five years, 10 years to develop. But what if it took 
three or four years and it was difficult, but then you live the rest of your life doing something that was truly enjoyable to you where you have an impact. And ironically, you'll probably make way more money than you ever have in your life doing something you enjoy. And even if you didn't, if you were supporting yourself and taking care of your responsibilities and your people, would you care about how much money you're making? You probably wouldn't because you're gonna be so happy and fulfilled that you're answering the calling of your soul. So the quote I'm gonna end this video with today is from Robert Greene, the author of 48 Laws of Power, Art of Seduction, a couple other ones. When it comes to mastering a skill, time is the magic ingredient. So it is the one thing that we only have a limited amount of. That's why get started and just start small. And if it's something that you wanna do, it will naturally and organically grow and begin to snowball. That's all I got for you today, guys. So thank you so much again for watching. Uh, if you watched and this resonated with you or you know someone that came to mind who needs to see this video, please like uh, and share and subscribe. Uh, this is my calling and it's a blessing to share this time with you and my gifts with you uh, as we continue this journey together. So peace and love to you and yours and I will see you next time. Peace.